What's up everyone, today we're going to be talking about Kyle Rittenhouse. Depending on who you are and who you get your information from, Kyle Rittenhouse is either the most evil person in the world, a racist, a white supremacist, and a troublemaker, or he's an American hero who used the second amendment to defend his life. Here's my take on the situation. So first we have to understand who Kyle Rittenhouse is. He's your typical gun loving and America loving kid. At the time of the shooting, he was 17 years old. He's from Antioch, Illinois. He worked as a lifeguard and was certified in CPR. An important note about him is that he worked in Kenosha and his father lived in Kenosha. So Kyle Rittenhouse's situation started with the shooting of Jacob Blake. We're not going to go into Jacob Blake's story. All I'm going to say about Jacob Blake is I'm glad that cop didn't give him a chance to stab his girlfriend. With the shooting of Jacob Blake, demonstrations and riots broke out in Kenosha. People from everywhere came to be a part of the demonstrations. As I'm writing this script, I keep almost putting protesters or demonstrators when I'm talking about the people who joined the Jacob Blake movement, but then I start talking about destruction and buildings and businesses that were broken into and robbed and cars that were broken down. I understand there were some demonstrators and some peaceful protesters. When I say words like like rioters and criminals, just know I'm not talking about the peaceful protesters. Rioters and looters and arsonists caused millions of dollars of damage to many many businesses in Kenosha. Car lots had car windows broken into and cars burned up. Restaurants and general stores were broken into and looted. There were also rioters at the city building that graffitied up the walls of the capital. And that's one very important detail, the graffiti on the wall. You'll see why this is important in just a second. Kyle Rittenhouse, being the kid that he is, he already worked in Kenosha. He might as well help clean up during the day after the night riots, right? In this picture here, we can see Kyle Rittenhouse washing graffiti off the wall of the Kenosha City Hall building. Look at that kid, cleaning that graffiti with such evil intent. I can't believe he would do something like that. Also with Kyle's work as a lifeguard, he had a medical bag in his truck that he kept with him. He walked around looking for people that needed general medical help and offered to treat them. What a criminal. Kyle also had a friend named Dominic Black. This friend let Kyle borrow an AR-15. A better way to say this, I mean, is Dominic Black bought the gun for Kyle, but was waiting until Kyle's 18th birthday to give him the gun. This is the gun that Kyle used to shoot the three people he shot. One night during the demonstrations, Kyle decided to brandish the gun using a tactical sling. You could argue that Kyle was brandishing the gun because he was looking for trouble and wanted to get someone to try to hurt him. If you did say this though, you'd be lying. There were plenty of people at these demonstrations who were brandishing their own weapons. Kyle stated in his testimony that he armed himself this particular night because he had seen rioters and demonstrators holding pistols. Kyle knew these people were angry. He had no idea how all of them would react with him putting out dumpster fires and giving people medical aid. The nice thing about all this though, you can find most of it on video. There's video of Kyle using a fire extinguisher to put out fires and the rioters reacting to him yelling and cursing and saying nothing at all nice to him. One of these specific people was Joseph Rosenbaum. He got very angry in one of these instances and told Kyle he was going to kill him and cut his heart out. And less than two hours later is when Joseph Rosenbaum got into a fatal interaction with Kyle. Rosenbaum found himself in the same car dealership Kyle was protecting, and Rosenbaum and other demonstrators got into a little tussle with Kyle, which mainly involved Kyle running away with his AR-15. As Kyle ran, no one chased him except for Rosenbaum. What a genius chasing a dude with an AR-15 when all you're armed with is a bag. Kyle ran to a portion of the car lot with several parked cars, so he had to slow down to maneuver himself through the parked cars. As he slowed down he realized Rosenbaum was now right behind him. An object flew past his head which Rosenbaum threw. Kyle later found out that was a bag but he didn't know at the moment. For what Kyle says was to protect himself he turned around to face Rosenbaum and pointed his gun hoping it would make him stop chasing him. Which it didn't. I mean looking at the video there wasn't a lot of time for Rosenbaum to stop. Kyle probably had so much adrenaline running through his veins he didn't even realize how quick it was. Rosenbaum appeared to be reaching for Kyle's gun. Kyle saw this so he pulled the trigger quickly four times and Rosenbaum fell to the ground. As these gunshots were heard through the crowd, those people who originally ran away when Kyle mounted his AR began to run to where Kyle shot Rosenbaum. And Kyle, seeing the crowd of people forming around him, took off and started running for the police line which is a couple blocks away. And as he ran, he heard people scream, get him, get him, and he testified that he feared for his life at this moment. I mean, I would definitely be fearing for my life if I just shot someone and a crowd of people started forming around me and screaming to get me. As he was running to the police line, part of the crowd followed him, continuing yelling and asking why he shot him and asking why did you shoot him why did you shoot him Kyle
Kyle just kept running and even said, he had a gun, I had to. Kyle never saw that Rosenbaum had a gun, so this was a lie, but if you put yourself in Kyle's shoes, he just wanted to get out of that situation. This statement was the best way to get the crowd to get away from him, and the best way to get the crowd on his side. People were throwing things at him as he was running, something hit his head and he lost his balance, he tripped and he fell on the ground, and with this crowd of people still chasing him, one person jumped and kicked him on the head, another person, a dude named Anthony Huber, saw Kyle was down and decided to go for him. Huber used a skateboard to bash Kyle in the head. A quick side note, if you read CNN's article about these victims, they forget to mention this fact even though it's all in the video. So Huber bashes Kyle in the head with the skateboard. Huber then puts his hand forward as if he's grabbing for Kyle's gun while his other hand is still holding his skateboard. Then Kyle shot Huber in the chest and Huber fell to the ground. Quickly after Huber was shot, a man named Gage Grosskreutz ran over to Kyle with a pistol in one hand. In the video of this incident, you can see Grosskreutz point his pistol at Kyle's head, and Kyle fires one shot at Grosskreutz. This round tore Grosskreutz's bicep from his arm, making him no longer a threat to Kyle, so Kyle continues to run to the police line. Kyle finally makes it to the police line and he put his hands up and explained to the police that he shot someone and he needs to turn himself in. With all the chaos that was already happening, the police were unresponsive to him. They even pepper sprayed him and they told him to go home. So rather than going home, he went to the car lot where his friends were and he told them what happened. And he was having what his friends described as a panic attack. He was vomiting and shaking and delirious. One of his friends took him to the police station in Antioch because the police station in Kenosha was boarded up and not accepting visitors obviously due to the unrest in the city. After telling the police station what happened, he was put into a juvenile facility before he was extradited back to Kenosha where he was released on a two million dollar bell. Are you kidding me? Two million dollars? He was able to make this bell with the help of Lynn Wood, a defense attorney who posted a GoFundMe page on some Christian website called Give Send Go. So one of the most important things we can take from this story is the reaction that the media had. How did the media react to Kyle Rittenhouse's shooting? I always love analyzing how the media reacts to everything because it always enlightens me on how much they're lying to us and how corrupt and dishonest they are. How the media portrayed Kyle Rittenhouse after the shooting shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Almost all the mainstream media companies called Kyle Rittenhouse a white supremacist that was out for blood. They called him a white supremacist. Look at all these people that he shot. Do any of these guys look like anything but white to you at all? They all look white enough to colonize America to me. None of the mainstream media companies took any time to vet the story of what happened. Shooting for self-defense is never good enough for them anyways. Even if the video showed people with guns walking up to Kyle screaming they were going to shoot him, the media would say how evil Kyle was if he decided to defend himself. It's only in this crazy world that the media goes and calls Jacob Blake, an abusive piece of trash, a hero. They call that dude a hero. And then they call Kyle someone who was helping out, cleaning up paint, giving people medical aid, and someone who had to defend himself, a white supremacist, for shooting three people who are clearly white. Did you guys see how much money was raised for Jacob Blake? His GoFundMe is at $2.4 million. Jacob Blake is like the boyfriend we see in those TikToks. Would you slap your girl for a million dollars? Manny not only slapped that girl, he was ready to stab her with a knife. Kyle Rittenhouse also got a GoFundMe set up for himself. The only problem is it was taken down because you can't raise money for anyone the media thinks is a white supremacist. Luckily there was another website that I mentioned earlier, Give Send Go, that raised money for him. I just took a look at this website and there's another campaign on it called The Statue for Kyle Rittenhouse. That would be epic, man. And the media continued to berate Kyle and lie about him until his trial. I'm not going to go too deep into Kyle's trial. I'll just hit some of the most important things that I found. The prosecutor, Mr. Binger, he's probably going to lose his job or just be severely demoted. There were so many rookie moves that he made during this trial. Some of the witnesses he'd brought on said things that hurt his case. During prosecution, one of the witnesses said Mr. Binger was making him uncomfortable by putting words in his mouth when he should just let the witness give his own point of view of what happened that night. One of the prosecution's biggest arguments was that Kyle was just looking for trouble that night and that he crossed state lines to join the right-wingers and causing trouble for the demonstrators. This argument makes no sense at all. Remember those pictures I showed earlier? Kyle was helping wash paint off the city hall building. That's not something you do if you're gonna go to an area just to cause unrest. The stupid argument that he crossed state lines to cause trouble? Bro, he crosses state lines every day just to go to work. His dad lives in Kenosha. He has a family in Kenosha. 
It's also just 20 minutes away from his home where he lives in Antioch, Illinois. The argument makes no sense. It's just rhetoric used to make his 20 minute drive sound evil. Another one of the prosecutor's big arguments is that Kyle shouldn't have an AR-15 and he shouldn't have used it to protect himself when he was attacked. I mean, yeah, he probably shouldn't have had an AR-15, but none of the cops were there protecting the city, so someone had to do it. And this was crazy. I mean, you guys, if you don't believe me, go watch the trial for yourself. Mr. Binger honestly said that Joseph Rosenbaum was shorter than Kyle, and Kyle should have seen this and not thought of shooting him. Well, I guess if someone's shorter than you, it automatically means you're better at hand-to-hand -hand combat. I mean, we can look at the Second Amendment. Mr. Binger provided his own version of the Second Amendment, I guess. The right to bear arms shall not be infringed unless the person or persons attacking you are shorter than you. Then you need to use hand-to-hand -hand combat because that's just cruel to shoot someone who is shorter than you even though they are running at you like they want to kill you. That's Mr. Binger's version of the Second Amendment. Mr. Binger also used a form of this argument when describing what Kyle's reaction should have been when Anthony Huber, the skateboard dude, was attacking Kyle. During the trial, Mr. Binger described Huber as being unarmed and not a threat to Kyle's life. Funny thing about this, back in May of this year, a man was found guilty for an incident back in 2018 where he killed someone by hitting him with a skateboard. So Mr. Binger probably should have done his research and he would have realized that if you hit someone hard enough with a blunt object, a skateboard included, it can really hurt and kill someone. There are many other interesting points during the trial, but I'll let you look at them if you'd like to. Let's move on to my favorite part, the verdict. Rather than talking about this, let's just watch it together. Richard McGinnis, we the jury find the defendant Kyle H. Rittenhouse not guilty. As to the third count of the information, unknown male, we the jury find the defendant Kyle H. Rittenhouse not guilty. As to the fourth count of the information, Anthony Huber, we the jury find the defendant Kyle H. Rittenhouse not guilty. As to the fifth count of the information, Gage Rosekreutz, we the jury find the defendant Kyle H. Rittenhouse Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. Members of the jury, are these your unanimous verdicts? Is there anyone who does not agree with the verdicts as read? Would you wish the jury pulled? That was beautiful, man. I mean, this kid has been through so much. I'm so happy for him. There's obviously going to be more demonstrations and riots because of this not guilty verdict, but I'm glad this isn't going to prison for defending himself. I can't wait to see when he sues all these media companies that lied about him. He's gonna win them so easily. If a news company lies about you and you have a not guilty verdict to back you up, you're pretty much set to win no matter what. This kid is gonna be a millionaire and I'm so happy for him. He's gonna need security for the rest of his life probably but luckily it'll be paid by all these media companies that lied about him that's it for today guys thanks for watching and subscribing share this with your friends and have a great day